it doesn't matter how many clicks you're getting, if none of those clicks are actually converting on the page, then you're not doing your job and you're not going to be collecting that money at the end of the day. Hey, podcast listener, you're about to discover insider tips, tricks, and secrets to making more sales and converting more prospects into customers with email marketing. For more information about the Email Marketing Podcast or the Autoresponder Guy, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Hey everybody, it's John McIntyre here, the Autoresponder Guy, and it's time for episode 29 of the Email Marketing Podcast, where we talk about the top tips, tricks, and secrets for making more sales and growing your revenue with email marketing. Today, I'll be talking to Kevin Davis. Now, a podcast listener emailed me a while back and asked me an interview. Kevin, he said that he had shared some unbelievable information in a Facebook group about some things he was doing with email marketing, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, Kevin started out online many, many years ago, way back during the AdSense Gold Rush of 2004, and uh, today, we're going to talk about how to improve open rates, click-throughs, and conversions with some strategies and tactics that uh, we haven't really talked about on this podcast before. Some of it's kind of advanced. Some of it's just stuff that hasn't come up. So it's segmentation, split testing, email retargeting, email analytics, uh, email deliverability, all this kind of stuff. So we'll get into that in just a minute. To get the show notes for this episode of the Email Marketing Podcast, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash 29. If you want to leave an iTunes review, I will uh, send you a virtual high five via email. Go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Leave your link in the review and I will read out the review on the show so we can try and get some visitors to your site. Now, I've got a quick question for you, the listener. I want to know what podcasts would be good for me to do an interview on. So this is not people that I should interview for my podcast. This is people that you would like to interview me. So I'm, I want to go on a bit of a promotion. Uh, streak and go on as many podcasts as I can. So if you know of a marketing podcast, whether it's on email or just direct response marketing or copywriting and you think I'd make a good guest, let me know who they are and uh, if possible, maybe there's a way you can intro me to uh, whoever the owner of that show is. Now, got three listener questions today and then we'll get into the interview with Kevin Davis. Question number one is how do you get clients? This is a big question. It's a very good question, but there's, there's courses and books and videos and all sorts of things on this. So I'm going to go through this really quickly. You have to get there. If, one way to do it is to get their attention, and that's basically inbound marketing. So this podcast is an example of that. You can do this with uh, blog posts, uh, any of these type of things where people come to you, that you get their attention with something, the, 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 the bait, like the podcast or a, a blog post or a video or an email list that you have, and then you have their attention, and then you just give them an offer, which is, hey, I you know do this service, hire me, please. The other way is outbound. Now, this is uh, cold calls, ads, all that kind of thing, that, that type of thing. Now, I've done inbound marketing for my site with the podcast, uh, with my own podcast. I've been on lots of other podcasts already. I have the website. I have blog posts. I have an email list. So people come to me rather than me going to them. I don't cold call. I don't advertise. Uh, it's a very inbound kind of thing, and that can work, but it does cost a bit of time. If you're willing to, to front the cash, I would suggest that you do uh, outbound and go do some ads. Pay a cold, say, a cold, some of the cold call for you. It's faster, but it's more expensive, at least initially. Question number two, how to attract good clients? How do you attract good clients on a long-term basis? Uh, this is really simple. It's a great question too. You have to be so good at what you do that you can turn people away that you don't one. So this means that you have to demonstrate your value, demonstrate why you kick ass at whatever it is, to the point where you've got so much deal flow, which is so many people coming to you who want to hire you, that you can just turn down everything you don't want and just accept the jobs that you do want. And what this means is you can just filter for the best clients, the one with the ones with the most money, who are usually the ones who are the least hassled. They don't need thousands of edits to whatever the work happens to be. Question number three, the final question for today is give me a generic autoresponder outline for a few different markets. This, I love this question. Now, it's, it's very simple. The autoresponder is designed to build a bridge from the prospect to the product. So the prospect is a person who has a problem, who has a set of problems, and you have a product to sell them. The autoresponder's job, as is the goal of all marketing, is to build a bridge from where that prospect is right now to where he's experiencing the solution or the result that he wants, and that's what your product gives him. So the autoresponder builds that bridge, and it does this by solving problems. So here's the framework I use. I call it the HIPS, or the McIntyre Method HIPS framework. 
H stands for hook, okay? So first thing you gotta do is hook their attention. I stands for interest, and this is where you get them interested. You, the, this is the first few lines of your email. If they are not interested after those first few lines, they're not gonna read. They're gonna archive that email or delete it, or send it to spam. P is a parable. This is where you tell a story about something that happened the other day, or a story from, you know, about Abraham Lincoln and how he's, you know, Abraham Lincoln's guide to email marketing, which is one of my emails. And then S stands for slide or sell. So basically, after that, you've hooked their attention, you've got them interested, and you've told them a story. This is where you say something like, well, you know, that's a bit like email marketing, you know? And then you slide your product in there. You know, if you want to learn more about this, here's my product. Here's a link to the page. That's what I do. You can see that at dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Sign up, and you'll see how I do it. And uh, I sell in every email, so I would do that. So email one welcomes them, welcomes them to the family, tells them what's coming up, that you're going to send them this great information on how they're going to get solutions to their problems. Now, here are three generic outlines for a few different markets. Market number one is weight loss. So, what you want to do is get a couple problems that people have with in that niche. Okay, so weight loss. One email would be, the email one welcomes them. Email one, email two, sorry, says something like how to exercise without a gym. And you tell a story about a buddy of yours that, you know, couldn't get anywhere, uh, you know, well, was fat and overweight and, and had no energy because he thought that you had to have a gym to exercise. And then at the end of the email, the slide says something like, well, you know, that's not actually the case. You know, with the program that I've set up, you don't actually need a gym. Here's a link to it. Another email would be, does coffee help weight loss? You could tell a story about how you used to drink lots of coffee and how it inhibits your appetite, but how, you know, how a lot of people think it helps with weight loss, but how it doesn't really, that people need to focus on other things like working out, which is what your program's for, and here's a link. You know, another email would be, what if you've always been fat? And what you're trying to do with that email is just overcome the objection that people have when they're like, well, I've always been fat. I can't lose weight. I'm just a fat person or I'm just an overweight person. Okay, another market would be the make money market. So just, you just, every email just has a problem and has a story about that problem. So you might have an email about how to be more productive. And then if you want to be really productive, you, you ha- actually need your course because your course is what's going to, it's going to cut that learning curve in half and mean that they're going to achieve more with your course than they would otherwise. Another email might be eliminate limiting beliefs because if they don't eliminate limiting beliefs, they're not going to get anywhere, right? They're just going to, or if they do get their goal, they'll sabotage themselves. But hey, what do you know? Your product has a segment, has a, a part of your product, teaches them how to overcome these limiting beliefs. Then there's a, uh, say we're doing a personal training biz up product so you could have an email on how to get clients on how you know tell a story about someone who couldn't get clients but then you know bought your system and then or maybe they didn't buy your system but let's say they didn't have clients then they figured out a way to do it and their step-by-step system is available in your product as a case study another one might be how to eliminate bad clients another email might be how to increase your rates so you want to give them what and why so tell them what they need to do which is like I did with the HIPS framework. Tell them why they need to do it because it's uh, the best way to sell via email. But when they want how, when they want to know how to actually do it, how to actually sit down and or go out and exercise or whatever it is, they need your product. So you can tell them that yes, you can exercise without a gym. Yes, it doesn't matter if you've always been fat. But if you want to know how to overcome these, these problems, you have to buy my product. Okay, that's a couple of generic outlines. As you can see, all I'm doing is I'm taking problems that people have in that marketplace, turning them into an email, making the email a story, something interesting, something that gets them hooked and interested, and then I give them a pitch. It's very simple once you get used to it. If you want to know more, you can get the McIntyre Method, which is my product, and that's at McIntyreMethod.com. Otherwise, that's it for now. So let's go get into this interview with Kevin Davis and find out about boosting conversion rates, open rates, click-throughs, all that sort of stuff. It's John McIntyre here, the order is fun guy. I'm here with Kevin Davis, an email marketing podcast. Oh, sorry, an email marketing podcast listener sent me an email and begged me to interview the guy after he saw some unbelievable info that he shared in a private Facebook group. And today we're going to talk about some of that. So Kevin, how are you going today? Real good, real good. Uh, before yep. we get into talking about open rates and click-throughs and conversions and all the email stuff, Tell us a bit about yourself, what you're doing, and that kind of thing. I started out online many, many years ago. It seems like compared to a lot of people that are on online now, back in uh, 2004, 2005, when big seminar was happening and and what I like to call during the old AdSense gold rush. Uh, so we had a, an AdSense system churning out clicks and and cash, and and then it all just fell apart at some point. So. <laughs> The latest ventures have actually been more focused towards Facebook. So we've been developing applications for Facebook for the last two years under Social Traffic Lab. 
And then we we looked at spinning that off onto a new platform called App Amigos, and that really never did take hold. And so we just kind of moved our existing apps over to that platform. And now we're kind of in an evolution phase, I guess, with Social Traffic Lab and becoming more of a content publisher uh, portal for that, kind of like what HubSpot's doing for their model. Cool. Okay. Well, um, we, let's get right into it then. So you want to talk today about uh, improving open rates, click-throughs, and conversions. So where, where do you think is the best place to start with like a maybe a big picture overview of why this stuff's important? Yeah, sure. I mean, of those three, the biggest thing, and I touch on it later on in my in my notes here, but the the biggest thing that you really need to focus on is conversions. A lot of times, you'll look at your open rates and your click throughs, and you'll feel real good because now you've made this improvement. But at the end of the day, what you're really in this for is to make money. And if if it doesn't matter how many clicks you're getting, if none of those clicks are actually converting on the page, then you're not doing your job, and you're not going to be collecting that money at the end of the day. So all of those are a component in the whole equation, but the the big metric to look for is what's actually converting. Okay. Okay. I, I brought this up with people, you know, plenty of times that they yeah, everyone worries about open rates and click throughs. They're really the vanity metrics. If you can say that you've got a thirty right. or a forty percent, you know, if you're using lots of storytelling, you can get a lot higher than that. And uh, you know, if you can go out there and say, well I got an eighty percent open rate on the latest email. So I was like, wow. Right, but the real kicker is like, are you making any money from your emails? Because I know people who are getting five percent open rates, and they're making a, a shit ton of money online. And so it's kind of like, what would you want? Do you want like a to not be making too much money and have really high open rates, or do you want to be killing it and just have really bad open rates? And and a lot of people think that open rates and sales are the same thing, but they're just they're just not. Right. And it's the same type of thing like in SEO versus paid traffic. Uh, we run an e-commerce business as well called discountcardstock.com. And actually looking at the stats, our paid traffic converts a lot better than our SEO traffic. Um, and so everybody talks about, oh, I want you know, to SEO my e-commerce site. And I say, well, you should actually look at doing some paid traffic. Oh, I can't afford that. Well, then you have the wrong e-commerce business, brother. <laughs> right. It's kind of like, you know, you spend a dollar to make two bucks, two dollars. How do you not have the budget for something like that? It just doesn't make sense. And with our business, it's also about lifetime value. That's another metric that a lot of people, there's not a lot of people talking about it. A lot of people don't focus on it. A lot of, you know, affiliates, are, a lot of people are doing affiliate marketing. They're just looking for that sale and get their commission. But in an e-commerce business, uh, a lot of times our initial sale is about at uh, break even or a little bit above break even. And then it's the subsequent sales that we get through the email follow up and the social media community and, and the different things we do to retain that customer. Right. I think this represents, this is such a huge difference between people who really get marketing and people who don't. This whole lifetime value, most people are thinking like that one hit wonder thing, you know, make the sale and then it's, you know, it's all over. But if you can have that back end built in or if you can create one, you have so much more budget, so much more, um, you can spend so much more on advertising because, you're making so much more money. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and get into this because there's a lot of stuff here to cover. So I think where I wanted to go first was actually looking at the two different types of systems. The system that we use for managing our email marketing is called Entreport now. It used to be called Office Autopilot. Um, it's very similar to another package out there called Infusionsoft. And, but a lot of people getting started in internet marketing use like AWeber, Constant Contact, or MailChimp. And really the big difference there is within Entreport and Infusionsoft, you basically have a single contact database and you can easily move and segment people around. Whereas in AWeber and those other systems, you have different lists and it's very difficult, especially if it's a double opt-in list, meaning that they have to confirm their email to move them to another list. Basically, they have to double opt-in again. It's just this, this hurdle that prevents you from uh, properly segmenting your list. Hmm. So you guys use Entreport. So is that the main benefit, just the segmenting? I mean, why is this important? Uh, it's important because with list segmentation, it's it gives me the ability to get those higher uh, open rates and higher click rate rates because now I'm targeting my campaigns basically on what people have told me through their actions of what they're interested in. Right. So like in a case, a lot of times if we're running a promotion for an affiliate product, we'll put out a content piece before we send out the affiliate swipe uh, so that we're actually, when it comes down to mailing the affiliate swipe, we're only emailing people that open that piece of content that's related to that affiliate product. 
So it allows you to – you can send promotions with uh, a far smaller chance of pissing people off because you've targeted right. the promotion to only people who actually want to hear about it. Right. And we also do some other segmentation like um, – so that would be more on opens, clicks, and buyers. So also if we're running a several-day promotion, we can take those buyers out of the rest of the emails in that sequence so they're not getting the same promotional emails for a product that they already bought. Hmm. Um, so we're able to tag those buyers. We also do segmentation in our contact database for – frequency. So uh, how often they log into the members area or how often they open an email or recency. And that's more of like, are they in our zero to seven day group or, you know, seven to 14 day in the last 30 days. And so a lot of times we're really targeting promotions to people that have just been active in the last 90 days. Hmm. If they're older than 90 days, they're more into a content and reactivation sequence within our system. Okay. And do you have a, I've heard a lot of people doing this now where if people have been on the list for say a month or three months and they haven't opened an email, you send them an automatic email that says, hey, you've just been unsubscribed. Click here to resubscribe if you're still interested. Yeah, we don't go to that extreme. We're a lot nicer marketers, I guess, than than some people are. A lot of it is is going out and trying to find out what they're most interested in. We'll do like a survey email that instead of actually sending them to a survey, we'll just have a couple different links in there. And then based on what link they clicked on, we can actually tag them as what their interest is. So um, in our case, a lot of our uh, customers are offline marketers, so they're working with local business, but it's about 60% of our list. So we'll actually send out um, an email with three different links and have them choose whether they're an affiliate marketer, a product creator or owner, or an uh, offline consultant. And then through that, we can then segment the messages and the offers that they're getting down the road. That's a really great point that you don't actually have to have a survey. You can, uh, you know, you can just use the links and what they click on to find out what they want. Yeah, we also do that for signing people up for webinars as well. And we just say, hey, click here to sign up for the webinar. And then they get to the thank you page and say, hey, I didn't get to the go to webinar sign up. We still get some support emails about that. But uh, for the most part, our list understands what we're doing now. Okay. So are there, you know, someone wants to get started with, with the segmenting. What would be, say, the top three or top five ways you could segment a list? Would you have like a best practices when it comes to segmenting? I think the best practices on, in starting is to to do that type of thing, what we're doing with our affiliate promotions, even our product launch promotions is sending out a couple pieces of content. It's like a pre-launch sequence. Um, And then when you actually, that first barrage of emails going out, you're only targeting to the people that interacted with that first set of content. Okay. So that way you're not burning out your list. The whole list would get the content pieces, but only the people that reacted to those content pieces would actually get the offer emails. And so in the long run, going back to that, what we talked about originally, in the long run, this is going to increase conversions because you have a better relationship with the list, right? Right. And they've already told you that they have some kind of interest because with if they've especially if they've clicked through, if they've opened the email, it means that their subject line got them to open the email. If they click through, it means the content of the email now convinced them to go out and check out the offer, or check out the piece of the content. And then of course you have the buyers. And and that's the thing is I would also segment it in such a way that once you have buyers that you can take them out of the list. Now, even for affiliate promotions, we actually use tracking IDs for like the different affiliate systems that we use. So we can use either their contact ID, their first and last name, or their email address as a tracking ID. So we can go back into our database and update them that they actually converted to a sale. That's very cool. And uh, well, yeah, let's keep moving then. So what about split testing? What are you, what are you doing yeah. there? Yeah, for split testing, we've, lotted, we've done a lot of things over the last uh, about four months, we really got heavy into email split testing. Practically every email that we send out, we're split testing subject lines. My partner, Spencer, is our copywriter. He'll usually give me one or two uh, subject lines, and then I'll write a, a few different variations of that. We've also tested the content. So we'll send out two totally different emails mm. uh, for a promotion and and track the results on those, on the opens and click-throughs and uh, conversions. And then also, as far as the format of the email, we've done some testing with the old school hard break lines so that they fit well within a mobile device, the unwrapped lines, uh, just use a regular line wrapping, and then also HTML emails. And for us, the, what has been working the best still has been text-based emails. Um, I think people are seeing, the only people that really send out HTML HTML emails are people that are trying to basically sell you something pretty much. Okay. I had a really interesting experience recently when I worked with a client and um, 
uh, they split tested something like five or ten different emails. They had a huge list, and uh, with the text emails did the worst. Like the standard internet marketing yeah. style of just you know, hey, but you know, hey, Joe, you know, text, 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 and then the sign off. That was the worst email out of the lot. And the best one was actually a HTML email with the company's yeah. logo at the top, with a you know, hi there like one or two sentences that gave them a link back to the website, which was an offer to do something. But right. it was just very, very interesting. I, I use text with everything I do, but I was very surprised by that result. It seems like some companies HTML will actually work better. Yeah, we were surprised as well. And it all comes down to testing. And until you start testing with your own list and your own audience, you don't really know that. Uh, some people make the assumption that everybody's using, you know, HTML emails that should be using HTML emails. And really you should let your, your subscribers decide that for you. Absolutely. You've got something written down here called email retargeting. I'm not even sure I know what that is. We do a lot of ads on Facebook. And so for that, for retargeting, we use a company called Perfect Audience. And, and we're going to start using ad roll as well. And what you can do is you can actually put a retargeting pixel. So like a a tracking pixel, just like an affiliate tracking pixel within the email itself. And what that does, it allows you to create an audience within the this ad platform, like Perfect Audience, for actually targeting ads on Facebook based on people that have opened your email. Okay, that's very interesting. So, because I know retargeting, so what you're doing is you're tagging someone when they open the email, and then you're they don't even have to go to your website anymore. Just as long as they've opened that email, they're going to see your ad all over Facebook. Right, and then you can actually also put the targeting pixels on the landing page, so you know the, the people that click through, or you can also put it on the the conversion page, the, the thank you page of after a sale, or whatever stage through your funnel if you have a multi-step uh, sales process as well. So then you can actually exclude people that have only opened the email. I mean, uh, you could all you could mail to people that only opened the email but didn't click through, or the people that opened the email and clicked through but didn't buy, uh, that type of thing, or even uh, retarget to your uh, cart abandonment also. So if they were coming through your funnel and didn't make it all the way through, you could target ads to them that way as well. Okay, and how are the results when you do you know you do this Facebook retargeting? That to me sounds like something which would be really effective. It is really effective. It's it's very much like uh, creating a custom audience on Facebook as well, except for these are people that are really specific to the campaigns that you're running. So, like on a the other option with creating a, a custom op- audience on uh, Facebook is you're uploading your email list into Facebook and they say, okay, of your email list, the, the 60% of your list matched to what we have and you can target them now um, up on Facebook ads. But on this, you, you have the growing list based on people that are visiting your website or opening your emails. And okay, well, let's get into um, the next one we've got down here is email analytics and optimization. What's this emails with acid on acid? Emails on acid is a analytics and optimization service. So, Basically, what a name! Yeah, <laughs> there's actually two of the ones that are probably the two main ones out there are Litmus and Emails on Acid. And what they do is you can either copy and paste your email in there, or you can send it to a set number, a set of uh, email addresses that they provide to you, and then it'll run a test based on le- being listed in the blacklist for spam. It'll do a uh, a formatting test. If you are sending HTML emails, it'll check for any kind of broken tags in your email. They also run a uh, an optimization service where it'll make a number of changes automatically to your email to increase the delivery rate. And there's some even specific to, like there's a change that it makes to the header portion of an HTML email so it, it gets delivered better on the iOS devices. And then they also have a service for images that didn't really work for us very well. It was really one of the selling points that we chose emails on acid over litmus. And what it does is it's supposed to basically take like uh, any images that you have in your email and turn them into like a pixelated representation of that. So basically one pixel at a time, it maps them out to a background color within the HTML to give some kind of representation of what the the image is. And then you can kind of overlay regular text over that if there was text on the, the thing. And so their demo looks great, but it, it never really worked very well for us. That's a, that's a really interesting idea. What are the, when you do these automatic optimizations, is it doing a good job of it or? Yeah, it did increase our delivery by about 15%, wow. I think. And, and that's what we used 
to optimize the templates that we had for our HTML emails. But then when we actually looked at it downstream at the conversions with our list and the people that we're targeting, the conversions were better on the, the text email. So we abandoned, at least for this point, our HTML formatting. Okay. So just across the board, text emails are getting better conversions for you. Yeah, for our list. And what are you putting in these emails? Are you just having like a high first name than the email than the sign off? We actually don't personalize any of our, so we're not doing any high whatever. It's it's all, the first line is to start right into, it's more of a story-based email. So kind of like autoresponder madness, soap opera sequences, not to quite the exp- extreme that that he goes into on that, but it, it's, it is following that model, but kind of our, just our rework of that of a little bit. Uh, because we saw that we started doing more of the soap opera sequences and stuff, and it, it, it with our audience, it wasn't as effective because they, they're subscribed to so many different emails because we're in an internet marketing space yeah. that it wasn't as effective. And so we we have kind of our own style to it. A lot of it is storytelling between either myself or or Spencer, my partner, which he's he's very into music. I'm more and he's the more the non technical guy, and I'm the technical guy. And he kind of writes. He has a kind of a he does all our email writing now, and he has kind of a really good background of, of you know, different things, different events in my life or uh, the different uh, tech blogs and stuff that we follow and different things. So a lot of it, we look at different things that are happening in the industry and not necessarily in internet marketing, but more in the tech startup side of it, because we really kind of think of ourselves as a software company more than a internet marketing company. And so we use like Flipboard on the iPad to go through um, all the different startup news on Mashable and TechCrunch and, and all these different tech blogs. And then we're looking for what the newest trends are coming out on the social platforms and how that works in with either what we're doing within our apps and within our marketing or how online consult- or offline consultants can help local businesses with that as well. Okay. So you're getting the news. So then you can use that in your emails. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And so we are basically, a lot of our emails are like kind of translating industry trends that we're seeing within like the tech blogs and the startup community over to how it can be used in just a general internet marketing space, as well as for someone working with a local business if they're an offline consultant. So they can be kind of, they can kind of use us as like a news source for them to be up to date on what's happening in the marketplace. To filter out all the other, all the bullshit that's out there and the the atmosphere of content. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And we do a lot of filtering as far as, we haven't been doing a lot of promotions lately. We've been doing more of of internal promotions just because there's kind of been a change in the marketplace. I think in the last six months or so, there's been a lot of shift in prog- uh, products and stuff. And there's just so much overlap and so many different promotions going on. Uh, one of the things that we also implemented with our email marketing is if anyone unsubscribes from our list, we actually, depending on... Uh, their lead score. We also do lead scoring in Office Autopilot. So depending on their lead score, we'll actually reach out to them just a manual email through Gmail and say, hey, you know, we noticed you unsubscribed. What's going on? We'd love to talk to you about it. Mm. And through that, we get about 35% of the people respond to that. We get on a short Skype call with them or just an exchange through email and find out why and, and what it was. And most of the time, it's actually just people that are just being bombarded because they've signed up for so many different email lists and bought so many products that they're just overwhelmed. They just unsubscribe from everything at, at once. And then we get, we get about half the people that then resubscribe to our list through that follow-up. If you could sum it up, you probably mentioned a whole bunch of them, but what are some of the most important things when it comes to focusing on conversion over all the other stuff? What I think the- from the email, yeah, I think from the email formatting itself is you really have to look at it kind of look like you look at a web page for SEO. You look at it from top to bottom when you're formatting your email. So the whole purpose of that subject line is to get someone to open it. The whole purpose of the first line is for them to it's in a way is for them to open it as well because if they're using gmail there's they're seeing those first few words hmm. uh, or majority of that first sentence in a lot of the different email clients and then after that it's the kind of the the beginning of each paragraph um, and the bullet points a lot of people are just scanning their emails now uh, so you need to be the paragraphs and and the points that you're making need to be very short and concise and be able and then have your highlights of you know, either the benefits or the calls, the action to go ahead and click through and check out more to be very easily identified. And a lot of people don't, 
necessarily do calls to action. We've tested some different things as far as putting like an equal sign and greater than sign to to point to what you need to click through. That's lost its effectiveness, at least with our list. And so now we're, we are just, we'll highlight certain keywords. So certain keywords and throughout the, the message or phrases will be bold. And then the uh, the text link going out to the site will actually be regular text or regular sentence. Click here to, to check out the video and or click here to you know sign up for the webinar or something like that. It'll be on its own line, but it's just a text link with a with a hyperlink out. Okay. Um, okay. So what with uh, Office Autopilot uh, or Entreport, they recommend not just putting a HTTP colon slash slash because those will get filtered out by the spam filters as well. So just just for everyone who's listening, the HTML email. When you say no HTML, you mean like no logos, no images, no you know crazy formatting. It's got to look like just right. basic uh, text email. However, it's still a HTML email in the sense that you can like bold things and ita- you know put italics right. and things like that. Right. So when I'm talking about HTML emails and what we're not doing there, we're not doing like a web formatted uh, page. So it's not, yeah. So it's not like a newsletter template Mm. that you're seeing. Like the person, the, the company that works really well with is Mind Valley. Mind Valley is, is more into the motivational personal development market and they're very feel good, creative people. I think a lot of our audience is more kind of like a technical type of thing or just give us the nuts and bolts stuff. Don't, don't get all pretty on us. Just yep. tell me, uh, tell me how to buy your product type of thing or tell me how to get more money. So. Okay. Okay. And so one thing I've been finding is I've been doing uh, like the raw links, the HTTP. That's how I do it. I, you know, my emails, I'm finding that's working well with, I don't say click here or I might say something like go right. here. But I'm finding that, uh, you know, when you see a link, you naturally want to click it. Yeah, everyone knows it's a right. link. Um, but so you're saying that's probably get, that may be getting filtered out by the spam filters? It could improve, or I mean, yeah, by, by not using those and using a text Still. and then linking that text, it could improve your delivery rate. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. Because it's one of the warnings that in Office Autopilot or Entreport, if you put a regular HTTP link in there, it'll come through with a warning when you save that message that it may affect your delivery. Okay. Okay. I'll keep. And that their in mind. postmaster, their postmaster there is is really good. Brendan doubles. So awesome. Sounds good, man. Well, we're we're just coming up to time right now, but uh, before we go, give yourself a plug. Tell people where they can you know go and find you and sign up to your list and you know kind of see what you do, and uh, then we'll yeah, say goodbye. The- Okay, sure. I think the best way to find out more about us is actually on our YouTube channel. If they just go to youtube.com slash social traffic lab. And then the second thing that we're now, I think in our sixth episode of our podcast, we have a new one going up today, hopefully, of uh, businessgrowthpodcast.com. And so on that, we're, we're interviewing a lot of different people about business growth and, and how to improve your business. Okay, cool. So you, you just started your own podcast as well. That's cool. Yeah, I used to have a podcast called Nomadic Warrior when I was when my plan was to travel around the world yep. as an internet marketer, but then I got into a relationship and and that kind of went away. <laughs> that changes everything, man. Yeah. <laughs> no worries, Kevin. Well, thanks for coming on, and I'll have those links down in the show notes at dropdeadcopy.com for anyone who wants to uh, get those links. Hey, everybody! Thanks for listening. If you want to discover more insider tips, tricks, and secrets about driving sales with email marketing, sign up for daily email tips from the autoresponder guy. Go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Sign up, confirm your email address, and I'll send you daily emails on how to improve your email marketing and make more sales via email. You'll find out why open rates don't matter and the seven-letter word that underlies all effective marketing and much more. The editing and production of this podcast were provided by Authority Engine. Learn more at authorityengine.com.